sucks, man. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah, I like it. Hey guys, this is 433. And we are here at La Liga headquarters. Thanks to LiveScore. And for what? We're here to meet the special one, Jose Mourinho. Stay tuned. Josie, how are you today? I'm ready for you. <laughs> okay, let's go. So first, I have some questions for you. And I want you to tell me if they're true or false. So let's go. First one. We heard that you used rope to tie Chelsea players together to make them stick together as a team. Is this true? For positioning, you tie them the with a rope. Tie them with a rope during training. False. That's a, that's a false. For false. sure false. For sure. Nothing happened like that. Nothing. Okay, cool. Next one. So is it true that you didn't have any picture taken with the Champions League trophy when you won it with Porto because you wanted to have a reason to be ambitious to win it again? False. That's also false? Yes. That's also false, okay. I can prove it. I have the pictures. You have the pictures, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so did you really let the team Mosur give the team talk instead of yourself once? Yes. Yes? When, when did it happen? A few times. A few I remember times. one set off time in the game uh, in the Portuguese uh, Liga, we were losing 2-0 at half time and um, my captain told, can you wait outside and uh, let me do a, a two minutes, a two minutes with these guys. He did it for two minutes and um, from the noise that I was listening outside, uh, some chairs were flying and I, I was just waiting and then he opened the door and he told now you speak about tactics because um, the dirty part of, of the job is done. Really? Yeah. So they told you to stay out of the dressing room? Yeah. Okay, that's surprising. And uh, it happened with other teams as well? Or only in Porto? In that, in that way, it happened in, in Porto that time. But sometimes there are even things that I, I like. I like the players to express themselves. I like the, the players to uh, to speak before big matches, uh, especially before big matches, I like uh, uh, some players to, you know, to give uh, a little bit of their experience. For example, when we played the uh, Champions League uh, final against uh, uh, Bayern Munich, uh, Samuel Eto'o was one of the two players that had experience of playing uh, Champions League before, and um, he had a talk with with the boys to try to prepare them for uh, what was waiting for them at mental terms. I think it's very important to use um, the know-how and the experience of, of other people. Good to hear. And the next one. Did you really get into trouble with police when arguing about your dog? Yeah. Yeah? What happened? Can you tell us? Yeah, I can. Uh, we had um, a dog with weeks. The dog um, was coming from uh, from Portugal. Obviously, the dog had all the um, how do you call it? Uh, all the, the injections. Um, all the injections. All everything was under control. But um, the English authorities they they wanted the dog in quarantine. The dog was so small, was so fragile. Uh, my kids were very small. Uh, they were in love with a little dog, the little dog was sleeping with them and then the police tried to get into my house to take the dog to quarantine and um, I grabbed the dog, I put the dog in, in um, one backpack I jumped through the window without them uh, to seeing me and I took the dog to the house of um, a friend of mine obviously they consider it ob obstruction to the mm -hmm. justice and um, they took me to the to the police uh, department, and um, I had to, to to answer to to questions. I had to bring a lawyer to resolve uh, the problem. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a nice story. Actually. Yeah, <laughs> that that dog never forgot it. <laughs> I still he's, still with you. He's, he's still in love with me. <laughs> never forgot it. So yeah, dogs are loyal, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hi guys, John Terry here. Just want to give you a little story about Jose Mourinho and our first pre-season tour in LA. So we're basically at dinner and uh, he gets up telling this story and then he calls Billy the Masseur up 
So a tray of drinks come over, attach it to the ceiling with a pole underneath and tells Billy to stand there and hold the, the tray of drinks to the ceiling. So Billy's standing there really proud that the manager's called him up on the first trip. And all of a sudden Billy's underneath these tray of drinks so he obviously can't move, can't release it because he's gonna get soaked and they're gonna smash everywhere. And the other tells everyone to leave the room. So all the staff, all the players kind of get out and leave Billy standing there under this tray of drinks for about five minutes. <laughs> we go out the room for about five minutes, come back in and Billy's still standing there really proud, like don't want to let the new manager down. So just, just one of the funny stories from, uh, from our first pre-season tour, but an unbelievable and the best coach by a long way. So just a little insight and a story from our pre-season tour. So with this one, is this true first of all? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's true? Yeah, of course and it's true. Afterwards, did you help him or is he still there waiting for you? No, <laughs> he, he, was, he was really in trouble and of course then the players were enjoying so much that he was in trouble because he, he was and he still is, you know, a, a very funny guy and a very important guy for the, for the good atmosphere in, in the team that then in between players pushing, pulling, some trying to help, some trying to disturb. You can imagine the way it handed. Okay, next one. Hi guys, as you know, uh, in, in England there is a tradition where the new players and a new manager or new member of staff has to sing and have this initiation song. But when uh, Jose came, he didn't, he didn't do that. He made like a little fun uh, out of the team where he created from the chairs, he created a, <laughs> a fighter plane where people were sitting in and one part was um, making the noise as an engine. There were people sitting on the wings, which uh, were, uh, you know, operating the machine gun. So every time there was an enemy somewhere where he was guiding with the story, what the plane should do, you know, the people had to do noises. And it's then right, the captain suddenly started uh, <laughs> shouting, the plane caught a fire and, and, uh, and then uh, the other members of staff ran in with the buckets full of water and, and splash everyone. So I think this is one of the stories you always, I always remember because it was a quite fun to see. So was this because you didn't trust your singing skills? Or? No, and it was because I felt that something like that is more important than singing in terms of trying to create a certain uh, atmosphere. And basically the story is for a certain period of time you are a team in, in, in a plane and you are fighting the enemy. So, and they get very, very committed to that. You know, the enemy comes from the right, they have to communicate. And then the guy in that side has to shoot the enemy. And then the guy is, is another one coming from the other side. Be careful, bam, bam, bam. And they are for a few minutes on that. Then the plane is, is, um, is heated, becomes on, on fire. And then is the moment where when I start shouting fire, I have all my assistants with big bu buckets of, of water. So the guys that are on the plane, they become completely That's wet, nice. full of water. Nice story. It's, it's, it's a good fun and, and it's a way for them to, you know, to feel together. Much better than, than some guy like me, not even good on karaoke, going back <laughs> to sing a song and, and look silly. It's better for the atmosphere, I yeah. guess. Okay. Oh, my son, my African son. I think uh, we came back from international game. And then uh, the next day we had, uh, we had an away game against West Brom, uh, early kickoff, uh, midday. So anyway, we went to the game and I mean, everyone was tired from international game, but I mean, we still have to play. And then uh, I remember the game against West Brom, we were very, uh, First half we were very, very bad. I mean, we played very bad and then uh, we went to the dressing room and Jose started talking and he was like, uh, Michael, are you okay? You feel good? I said, ah, I'm okay, a bit tired. Uh, you want to come up? I said, nah, no, I don't, I don't want to come up. I still want to play. Then he said, uh, then you better go go back and do a better job because you are I bought you for almost 25 million and you're playing like this. It's, it's very rubbish. And then, uh, well, it was not only me, it was uh, after me, he went uh, he went up against Drogba as well, saying, uh, you're calling yourself the king of Africa and you're playing like that, you know? <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's all in a good way, not in a, in a very bad way. Then uh, I remember we went back to, went back for the second half. And trust me, I don't know where, 
where I got that, that energy from, you know, I kind of have some, uh, some extra energy and I have to push, push and then, the, you know, we finished the game, you know, we finished the game, I think I did one, uh, one assist for Drogba, Drogba scored two, we won two nil. So it was all good and then uh, I remember coming, uh, we were all coming back to the dressing room and he was standing uh, <laughs> he was standing at the door, you know, giving everyone half five. So I go there and he starts smiling, he gave me half five and he said, yes, that's how I know, I know how you, how you, how you can play, you know. <laughs> I know you can do better than the, the first time. So yeah, it was, it was good and uh, yeah, it was a very special moment and, you know, since then, uh, I mean, my relationship with Jose has been, uh, it's been a good one and, I mean, he took me to Madrid, you know, and then, yeah, this whole, my white daddy thing started from Madrid, so yeah. A very special moment and uh, I mean Jose is always going to be one of my best uh, managers and I'm always going to be one of his uh, number one fans. This is funny and also a bit touchy, yeah? Yeah, but um, you know, special guys, you could, you could go to the limits with them, you know. Um, Drogba, Drogba come and uh, I was in the door of the dressing room waiting for them and Drogba come and he says, I am the king of Africa. <laughs> um, so I could, I could push this kind of, of personalities. Uh, you know, you have to choose your leadership, the way you communicate with the players, you have to choose in relation to their, uh, to their personality. You, you do that with some fragile boy is going to perform even worse than he did in in the first half when you go and you you criticize and you provocate when these guys they have this kind of personality you know that you have something extra from from them and uh, this team was full of these of these guys it was full of them lots of them uh, Asian, Drogba, John Terry, Peter Cech, Frank Lampard was incredible group of guys that you could really, really push to the limit. They were full of winners. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, so the next three, uh, I'm not going to stop because they're not telling any story. You don't have to talk uh, over them. We're just going to watch and we're just going to record your reactions. Ciao José, volevo salutarti, ringraziarti per tutto quello che hai fatto per noi. Abbiamo vissuto insieme tanti momenti belli, indimenticabili, che rimarranno nel nostro cuore e soprattutto nella storia dell'Inter. Ti mando un forte abbraccio, sai che ti voglio bene e ti auguro sempre il meglio. Hi José, I want to thank you for, for an amazing year we had together, 2010. Uh, we won everything what we, what we could win. Um, for me you are really the special one. Unfortunately, we, we only worked for, for a year together, but it's for always in my memory and uh, the, the confidence you had in me, um, yeah, that was amazing. So I want to thank you for everything and I hope to see you soon, my friend. Take care. Ciao, Jose. Speriamo tutto bene. Voglio vedere a presto in campo. Arrivederci. So that's it. Hope you liked it. I like, you know, Javier is Javier, is, is Inter, is, uh, is the captain, is a guy that uh, worked for years and years and years in that club and um, the dream was never arriving and he was already on the late stage of his career and the dream was never arriving. Arrived and when it arrived is normally that we have this special connection. Uh, he, he made, he finished his history at, at Inter in that season where we won everything, especially the Champions League. Wes um, is one of the players that, that gave the last click to, to Inter to go from a good team in Italy to the best team in, in, in Europe. And when he speaks about the trust, the trust was at such a level that we got him from Real Madrid in, in the last day of the market. And um, 
two days later, we play the derby against Milan. And um, nobody could believe that was going to play. People were thinking maybe he goes on the bench. He started the game against uh, Milan. And the result was Milan 0, Inter 4. Uh, so that, that was my, my trust on, on Wes. And I think in that 2010 season, was really, really unfair that he didn't got the gold ball because he won the travel. He played the World Cup final with, with Holland in South Africa. He was the best player in, in Europe uh, in, that, in that season. And Fatih is, um, is a face of many managers that I have a fantastic relation with, that probably people doesn't know because we don't have to be uh, telling the world that we are good friends. But with Fatih, I have uh, a very good relation. Um, I don't remember one of, you know, one of the most, you know, memories that I have uh, in football was in, in Istanbul on a match, uh, Galatasaray Real Madrid, where um, we beat them. We beat them in Madrid uh, quite easily. We go to to Istanbul and at half time. I was in the are, stadium. At half time we are winning. And uh, the world thought game is over, and Fatih and the players, of course, Drogba and Schneider in that team. Um, but uh, Fatih, his connection with the incredible fans, they almost turned it around. And in the end of the game, we got through. We, we, we qualified, I think, to quarterfinals in that match or semi finals. But I felt that I had to go to the center of the pitch with Fatih and, and to, to make an appreciation to, the, to that team and to that crowd because only possible with a manager like, like Fatih that the team that is losing, I think in aggregate 4-0, I think was 4-3 yeah. and still 15 minutes to go and we were in, in, in trouble. So I'm happy that was Fatih like, let's say, the one you got it. Uh, because I, I have very good relation with, with some some managers, and um, and Fatih is, is one of them. Thank you so much. Now we move on to the game. Let's play the game. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Let's go to the game. All right, guys. Now we're gonna play a game with Jose Mourinho. This is called the five second rule. So we each ha each have a category, and we have to name three things within that category in five seconds. You ready? Ready. Okay. First, I'm asking. Let's go. Name three strikers that you have managed. Adriano, Julio Cruz, Hernan Crespo. Okay, four seconds, not bad. My turn. And name three traditional Portuguese meals. Espetada, espetada, espetada. Goodbye. <laughs> okay, one meal for you. Now it's my turn. But this, who, who made these questions, guys? So hard for me. Okay. Let's go. Name three famous women celebrities. Uh, Julia Roberts, Madonna, Catherine Deneuve. Oh my God, okay, that's good, that's good. You were, you were in time. My turn. Name three Turkish players who have played in the Premier League. Uh, Tuncay Şanlı, Cenk Tosun, Çağla Soyuncu. I got it, okay, I got it this time. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, let me choose. Name three different animals. Dolphin, dog, horse. Easy, huh? Okay, third, third question for me. Easy. Name three World Cup winners. Oh my God. Uh, Ramos, uh, Kroos, Kapoor. Yeah, I'm, I'm late, I'm late. I'm late. Six seconds, I'm late. Okay, actually, two rounds left, and I have to win both of them. To, to have a chance to win. Let's go. Name three Portuguese legends. Amalia Damasio Vasco da Gama. <laughs> and that one is easy. For your generation, this is easy. Um, name three different clothing brands. Uh, Armani, Gucci, Lacoste. I knew it. Mm -hmm. Easy. Last one. Name three English defenders you have managed. Terry Cahill. Ah! 
It's done. It's oh, done. It's done. <laughs> okay, we got you on that one. Yeah. So, yeah, the score you won. Congratulations. Thank Maria. you. Thank you for being with us. Thank and you. Thanks to LiveScore for arranging us and bringing us to Madrid. Guys, stay tuned. This is 423.